guys! In this video lecture, we'll use reading text 3 as an example to illustrate the writing of inverted triangle structure for the introduction section in academic writing. Text 3 is taken from the paper entitled The Global Ocean is an Ecosystem Simulating Marine Life and Fisheries, published in the journal Global Ecology and Biogeography in 2015. It features a typical inverted triangle structure and provides relevant background information for readers to understand the topic. As student readers, we also need a bit of background information to familiarize ourselves with the topic before we start. This paper is concerned with the topic of ocean ecosystems. Ocean ecosystems are made up of a community of living and non-living things. They include everything in the oceans, as well as the saltwater bays, the shorelines, and so on. Ocean ecosystems are home to the smallest organisms like plankton and bacteria, as well as the world's largest living structure, the Great Barrier Reef. As a very broad topic, ocean ecosystems can be studied from different perspectives or forms of context. For instance, you could examine it from the ecological, economic, or geographical context. Then, what context does text 3 take? If we check out the title and the journal where it is published, we could infer that this paper is intended for experts in the field of ecology and biogeography, who are expecting to see how marine life and fisheries are simulated. Bearing this in mind, we'll now turn to text 3, the introduction section of the paper. As we have been emphasizing throughout this unit, introduction makes a strong first impression. A vague one prevents the readers from treating the writing seriously. On the contrary, a good one will attract the reader's attention greatly. A good introduction usually resembles the shape of an inverted triangle. It starts from the stage of defining where you briefly introduce and explain the research topic. It serves as a general announcement of what you are writing about. The next stage is contextualizing, which puts the research into a particular context and points out the knowledge gap. This is where you discuss the topic from a particular perspective and persuade your readers why your research is worthwhile. Based on the knowledge gap you have found, the introduction section then moves to the stage of focusing, where you assert the thesis statement of the research by addressing the research problems. What is the inverted triangle structure like in text 3? Let's now take a close look at it sentence by sentence. This is the first sentence. A golden rule of modeling is to use a scale and form that is appropriate for the questions it is to address. What is the research generally about? We could infer that this paper is about how to use an appropriate scale and form in modeling. This sentence introduces the research topic, but in a general way. As we are not sure of the modeling target yet, Let's see if we could figure it out in the second sentence. When dealing with the impact that fisheries policies and climate change may have on future seafood supply, that scale is global, since seafood is the most traded food commodity. And climate change already causes distributions of marine organisms to shift beyond regional borders. Compared with the first sentence, this one specifies the scale of modeling and forms the first supporting sentence of sentence 1. What's more, what is the target of modeling that can be inferred? Based on the words like fisheries, seafood, and marine, we could identify that it is about ocean. Concerned with the aspect of form, 
The next sentence is the other supporting sentence of sentence one. In this sentence, the authors wrote, with regard to form, we know that there are several model types that may be of interest, including size-based models, individual-based models, and trophic foot web models. What immediately captures our attention is that this sentence includes different types of models developed in the previous studies. What is the purpose of doing that? Actually, these different models serve as a disciplinary context for the present paper. In other words, they form the research background of the present study. One advantage of including disciplinary context is that it shows the readers the paper is built upon what has already been done in this field. In this way, it shows that the research is well grounded. Among these different model types, which one does this paper choose? Why is that? Let's move on to the next sentence. In this sentence, the authors wrote, we apply a foot web model because of the opportunities this creates for addressing biodiversity related questions, a topic we expect to use the present model for in future studies and because it is by far the most used methodology for marine ecosystems. Like sentence three, this one also provides the disciplinary context in which the authors specify the particular model type used and the reasons behind it. How does it justify the use of such a model? First, it introduces the opportunities for solving the biodiversity related problems and next, it highlights it's the most used model. Suppose this sentence was not included or it was written into, in this research, we apply the food web model, period. What would happen? It is likely that the expert readers would question the use of the model. As a result, it makes the research less convincing. In academic writing, it is very important to always remember to justify your research. This is because in scientific research, you need to justify almost everything that you did. Otherwise, critics can challenge your findings for their validity or relevance if they believe something went wrong. For instance, are you biased in how you selected people for study? Is there something wrong with your questions? And etc. Therefore, you need to have a valid reason for everything you did. Imagine that you are reading two different studies with similar designs and research methods, but with different reasons for doing it. Which one would you find more persuasive? For instance, as to why they did the research, one answered, I was curious, and the other one said, I noticed the flaw and wanted to fix it. Which one is more convincing? Certainly the second one. The point of this contrast shows how others will read your study. They will be looking to see how serious you are in examining the issue closely. Other than justifying your research, what is also important to a good contextual section is that it needs to specify how the study contributes to the research field. One useful way of doing it is by addressing the knowledge gap. What is knowledge gap? Knowledge gap is the research question which has not been answered appropriately or at all in the field of study. Why is it so important? That is because identifying and addressing a knowledge gap make your research truly contribute to the existing knowledge. Let's take a look at the following two sentences to see how they identify the knowledge gap. However, we emphasize that there is a need to develop alternative model forms for comparative purposes. It is also relevant to consider as an argument 
for global modeling that while general circulation models generally converge well at the global level, the results for individual regions show a wide range of variation. What knowledge gaps have been found? In sentence 5, the authors pointed out the gap for the aspect of form, as there is a need to develop different model forms to compare the results of different studies. In sentence 6, it is about the aspect of scale, which indicates that regional differences are diverse. Sentences 7 and 8 go on to further explain why there is a knowledge gap for the scale of modeling. The implications of this support the notion that models must be constructed to suit the scale of the questions they are to address. Downscaling is as much a problem as scaling up. How is the knowledge gap further justified? Here, sentence 7 echoes sentence 1 by restating the golden rule of modeling, which proves that the knowledge gap needs to be addressed. As we can see, sentences 5 to 8 work together to justify the research purpose by proposing and explaining the knowledge gaps, which also highlights the research significance. Having identified the knowledge gaps, the next step is to address them. In sentence 9, the authors wrote, With this in mind, and to add to our understanding of the Earth as a system, we present a spatial temporal food web model of life in the global ocean, spanning from primary producers through to top predators and fisheries. How are the knowledge gaps addressed? by the study through a spatial temporal food web model of life. As we can see, this model is an improvement of the food web model previously mentioned. What features does it have? Let's have a look at the next sentence. The global ocean is an ecosystem, is the thesis behind this effort. And we intend to focus on the impact human actions will have on the food supply for future generations. Here, we describe some of the steps used to build a global ocean modeling complex and evaluate model performance with regard to fit to historic seafood landings. How are the spatial and temporal features realized in the model? The word global appears twice representing the spatial scale of the model. On the other hand, the words future and historic correspond to the scale of time. So far, we have analyzed the meaning and function of each sentence in text 3. How do these sentences fit into the inverted triangle structure? Since the stage of defining is where you briefly introduce and explain the research topic, we find that Sentence 1 fits into this stage, as it is a general announcement of what the authors are writing about. In the stage of contextualizing, which sentence put the research into a particular context? Sentences 2 to 4, which provide disciplinary context regarding the scale and form in modeling the ocean ecosystem. Then, which sentences point out the gaps in knowledge? Sentences 5 to 8, which identify the problems to be solved in the current study. Last but not least, the remaining sentences perform the function of focusing, where the authors propose a model to address the knowledge gaps. In this lecture, we have familiarized ourselves with the inverted triangle structure of introduction by reading an authentic text. Why don't you go find a published paper in your research field and have a try analyzing its structure after class? If you have any questions or comments, please join us in the online discussion forum. Enjoy your learning! Mm -hmm.